the blanket um, two weeks ago in Relax and Restore is when we introduced it. So I'm gonna bring it back again today. Um, I've got it like a traditional yoga blanket, but you can always substitute with like a towel or something of that nature here. So I've got mine folded long ways in half, and then I took that long ways and I folded it in half again to make it like shorter. And then from there, I'm gonna fold it in half two more times to create a trifle. That's how we get this shape. So this is not a requirement. I'm just gonna demo with it to sit on in the beginning of class, just to show as a suggestion or an example of how the blankets can help us out. into the week. So if you deal with any kind of like hip or lower back issues, sitting on the blanket or even a block is a nice way to get a little bit of relief. And so that's what I'm going to do today. It feels really nice to just take some pressure off the base of your spine as well. I've got two little blocks just handy for little things along the way. So I'm going to just place them here for some hip support. Let's go ahead and close our eyes and just kind of reflect inward here. Sit up nice and tall. Just let those palms drop down to the knees or thighs. And as you take your next inhale, I just want you to draw in a nice new breath. As you breathe out, letting go of stale air, feeling your navel draw back in towards your spine. And we're just gonna simply begin to breathe. So breathing with some awareness, which is gonna help draw more oxygen throughout our body here. Sometimes as we come into our practice at first, if we haven't really been conscious of our breath prior to our practice, whatever we've been doing throughout the day, you might notice that maybe you're not doing belly breathing. It's quite common for us, especially if we're under a lot of stress, to kind of breathe up here from our chest. So starting to make that mental and physiological shift of belly breathing, using your diaphragm. You can even place a palm on your navel to see if you're doing it right. Sometimes it takes a little practice, but we're gonna think of inhaling, inflating a balloon, thinking of expanding more throughout your belly and diaphragm, which is gonna allow us to send breath throughout more areas of the body rather than just the chest. And as we breathe out, we're thinking of deflating a balloon, letting go of old air. You feel your navel draw back. We just think of starting to add these really subtle, natural little pauses at the top of the inhale natural little pause at the bottom of your exhale. We're going to start to begin to come into a rhythm here. And so you don't need to stress or worry if you're doing it perfectly right. That's not even what it's about. Just focusing on our breath just helps us to kind of stay in the present moment to help us keep our focus on our bodies, on our mats, on self-care. We're just going to hit pause on the rest of the world for just these 45 minutes here so that we can go back out feeling refreshed. And as you give yourself about two to three more rounds of breath as we open and center, I'll just invite you as an option if you want to put a theme to your practice today. Just something that brings you encouragement or joy, even if it's maybe it's kindness. Maybe you dedicate your practice to a loved one or to a cause. Maybe you just pick a relaxing image that helps you to feel motivated, to feel at peace. So let's take that last big round of breath. Think 
think of it as just sealing things in and then we're just gonna open our eyes just nice soft gaze here so just relax through the shoulders we're gonna start by loosening up through the neck before we really get into things so just inhaling sitting up tall as you exhale just simply drop the chin to the chest so you've got the length of your spine and now we're just getting a little stretch in the back of the neck go ahead and lift the chin and look up towards the ceiling and we're just gonna exhale, drop back down. So just move gently, nice and mindful. So let's nod the head, yes, just one more time. And then lifting our eyes back to the front here, we're just going to inhale, take our nose over to the right. So hold this first one a little longer. Keep the skin across your face, nice and relaxed. Softness through your jaw. You can always create space between your teeth to make sure that you're not clenching. And unwinding, we'll inhale through the middle and exhaling over to the left. So again, moving mindfully, we're just gonna go from right to left. And then meeting back in the center, we'll just meet with our eyes straight ahead. Go ahead and drop that chin to the chest again. We're just gonna do a little bit of rolling from side to side. So you'll just stack that right here over the shoulder. On your exhale, you're gonna sweep through the middle and then inhale over to the left. And we're just gonna breathe in and out as we sweep from side to side. So just loosening any tension here, just preparing our bodies to start to bring things up a little bit here. You can do these at your own pace. Let's go ahead and just start to bring things back to neutral. So just lift the eyes forward. We're gonna kind of deepen things a little bit by coming into some seated cat-cow. So I always like to really exaggerate and make mine a little dramatic by just bringing my shoulders way up into my ears, rolling them down my spine. I'm just gonna puff my heart out, look at the ceiling. So think of an open heart and chest. Think of some length in the front of your neck. You might even feel just a soft squeezing sensation between those shoulder blades. And counter pose, we're gonna take the cat pose by tucking the chin, roll those shoulders up and then shrug them forward. You can hold on to the knees or shins here for leverage. So think of just drawing the center of your back towards the wall or space behind you. The chin is tucked. So that'll give some length in the back of the neck. We're thinking of spreading those shoulder blades open, breathing some space and relief back into those areas and lengthening through the vertebrae. All right, let's go ahead and just move with our inhales and exhales. You're gonna take a pace and a rhythm that works for you. As we breathe in and out, we're just shifting from our back bending to back rounding. Nice big breaths. All right, let's bring it back up to neutral here. Shifting to some twisting, we'll start over to the right. So left hand's gonna stay on that right knee or thigh, kickstand with the right arm behind you. And this is where you can even take a block or a book and bring the floor closer to you if you need that support. So inhale, we sit up tall. Exhale, just being gentle in our twist here. No need to force it, we can always let breath help us to get more out of the pose. We don't always have to physically kind of push things to that next extension. The body will open when it's ready. And we're exhaling, winding back around as we inhale over to the left. Kickstand with that left arm behind you, lengthen through the crown of the head, sit up tall, exhaling. Little gentle anchor to the other side of our twist. Keep those inhales nice and gentle. Nice big exhale. And let's unwind, exhale. Bring it back around to the center here. So starting to shift gears, before we do that, let's go ahead and lengthen the legs out 
just give them a nice shake. We're not going to move into our forward bending quite yet here. We're going to stick with the spine, but just to kind of get that lengthened out because I know we've been in cross legs for a little bit. So once you've done your little bit of shaking out, we are going to come to a kneel. So if you've got knee issues and the kneel doesn't work for you, the sequence we're about to do, all of it can be done from a seat. You can do any seated position, go back to your cross legs, and just follow along. So I'm gonna come up to my kneel, and this is where the blanket's also gonna really come in handy for me since I'm kind of on this hard floor in here. I'm just gonna unroll it one time so that I feel stable. It's just gonna give me a little more cushioning for my knees. So if you have a block handy, for some of us we might not need one and that's fine, you don't have to use one. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna stack my two little blocks over to the right. So I'm gonna come up to a high kneel the thighs are gonna be hip width apart. So nice and stable here, you can always tuck that back toe for a little bit of extra stability. And then from there, take your left leg, feel free to use your support at any height as you extend that out. So we're gonna bring that left leg long, we're gonna angle those toes in a direction that helps you to feel stable and rooted, like you're not gonna fall over, all right? So if you're popping up here and you're like, hey, this just isn't happening, that's fine. Go ahead and just come back down to your seat and follow along. All right, so my hips are level. I'm gonna take an inhale, bring those arms up and out. So touching palms overhead, little light touch, and then exhale, bring your right hand down to the block. So this is where you're gonna tailor it to you. I have my block set up really high, but we can pop it down to medium. I can unstack and go low, or if I've got a lot of mobility, I can even come all the way down to the floor or even tent my fingertips. Just, just creating a little tent with your hand. All right, so fine. What works, we're gonna bring that left arm up and over. So as you can see, we've got this nice angle from our fingertips all the way long down towards our toes here. So engaging the core, but also thinking of it as a stretch. So you're breathing in and out. Remember that rhythm that you set whenever we opened and centered and seated. Make sure we're breathing here. So on our exhale, really engage the core. We're just gonna pop back up. Okay, so seeing if we can switch out sides. Taking that left knee, Again, use your support if you need to. I'm just gonna draw it in. I'm simply gonna switch out my props. As I begin to take that right leg, long out to the side, bringing myself back up. I wanna see if I can get my hips level. Then inhaling up and out. Little touch overhead. Exhale, we're gonna do, whoops, yep. Left arm down, yep. Breathing here. And to make sure that we feel stable here, one little rule of thumb that I like to think of is stacking my shoulder over my wrist. Because as you can see, if I'm way out here or too far in, I'm not gonna feel as stacked and grounded as I could. All right, we're breathing, we're lengthening all that space back out along down our side body. We're making sure our cores aren't like relaxed or disengaged. They are active. And we're gonna exhale, go ahead and draw back up. Use those obliques to bring yourself up. We're gonna switch one more time over to each side. So just setting yourself up here. Or if you are in seated, just keep with us. We're gonna inhale up and out. So this side's gonna be a little more challenging. We're gonna exhale, left arm down. So just a light touch to that outer leg. We can always kind of slide down there. Reach up and over. All right, breathe. And as we exhale, go ahead and lift your body back up. So we're gonna slide back in, and this time in between sides, since we're opening up a little more through our shoulders, we're gonna take a puppy pose, just reaching on forward. So you're in your high knee, we've got hips over knees, we're just gonna walk it forward here, and then press those hips back, you've got a nice flat back, arms are strong, breathe. So just taking that little pause before we finish out the next side. And exhale, go ahead and raise up. You're gonna walk it back in, nice and easy. So switch out the props if you need to. 
As we lengthen our right leg long, bring yourself up, squaring off here. Inhale, up and out. Palms touching overhead, right arm coming down. Remember, it's a light touch. You're pointing your toes at an angle that helps you to feel the most stable. And if you don't have a blanket handy, and also you can use a towel, it doesn't have to be like a, a blanket blanket. But if it, you find that it's starting to be like hard on the knees or anything, that's when you just switch and come on down to your seat. Exhale, go ahead and lift things back up. Use your support to slide back in. We're gonna melt down just child's pose. Take three breaths, great job. So taking a little rest for two more. Okay, so moving on, raising back up. I am going to switch gears and go long ways down the mat here. As we come into table pose, so again, blanket or towel, I'm just gonna flip it here and continue to use it for a little extra support underneath my knees. So in table pose, we're gonna spread our fingertips nice and wide, stacking shoulders over wrists, hips over the knees here. So we've got a nice flat back on the top. So think of like a table that you'd wanna build yourself. You'd want that surface nice and flat. You'd want your legs nice and stacked underneath here. You'd want it strong, so strengthen and engage through the core. Feel the spine nice and long. We're gonna do our traditional cat-cow here by inhaling, looking forward. As we lift our eyes, our tailbone's gonna point up just really slightly. We're gonna loop those shoulders on down the spine and let's counter pose, tuck your tailbone, tuck your chin. Raising up and out of shoulders and hips, breathe. And as you create more space between the vertebrae and really round, it almost even feels like a little crunch in your core. So let's keep it moving. You're just gonna move in your own rhythm here. Let your own body be the guide. As we inhale and exhale and do our cat cow. So the inhale is the cow pose, the back bend where I'm at now. The exhale is the rounding, the cat pose. So no matter what variation you're taking, just making sure that we're kind of using that guideline for our breath. And let's bring things back to neutral. So just nice flat table here. We are gonna move into our thread the needle, one of my favorites. So taking an inhale, let's do a little prep. Left arms floating up and out. Open that inner shoulder and left half of the chest. Exhale, we're gonna thread. So bring that left arm down, and thread it underneath the right, and lower all the way down. So I love using blocks here as a modification for this. You can always do block or blocks underneath that left cheek and ear. This right arm here is here for support. We're gonna think of breathing space into the upper back spine in between those shoulder blades. Breathing in and out. So start to bring your focus to your right hand and arm, bending through that right arm and elbow, really grounding. We're gonna exhale, start to press our way back into table as we prepare for the other side. So left arm stays down. Inhale, little prep with that right arm, we're floating it up and out. Exhale, threading underneath. So again, I can use my blocks. I can always just do one little block and throw pillows or any other pillow. That Those are things, again, or a folded up towel. Any of that will work. It's just to create some elevation. So let's go about two to three more breaths. See, we've got this left arm here for support. If we push into it, we can even take a little bit of pressure off the pose and have a little more control. All right, as we exhale, ground into your left arm. Go ahead and press your way back up, table pose. Okay, 
So just to kind of warm up our core and get that activated a little bit, we're gonna come into balancing table just one time on each side. So right off the bat, the modification for this is going to be to drop either limb. Normally in balancing table, we're doing opposite arm and leg. So if that is just too much at this point in your practice, you're gonna drop either limb. That could be the arm or the leg. I just call it like a three-legged table. So either one of those is fine as well. So taking an inhale, we're gonna engage our core. Let's start by reaching the right fingertips forward. We're gonna kick that left leg long. The trick is to imagine the fingertips and toes reaching really far away from each other. The core is engaged, you're flattening through the back. Strong left arm. Breathe and exhale lower. Take a full round of breath. And we're gonna do the other side. So inhale. Left fingertips reach, right leg shoots back. And you can do a pointed or a flexed toe, whatever you prefer. Sometimes flexing the toes downward can help to make sure that your hip is in the right alignment. Squeezing through that, the back of that left shoulder, exhale lower, very nice. Let's take a little rest, sit back child's pose. So I'm gonna take the wide knee variation here. Feet are mostly together. You're opening some space between those knees and thighs. We melt down, again, blocks, blocks, blocks. Extra support for the core head if we need it, okay? So just take a couple breaths, just kind of regroup. One more full breath here. If you did pick a theme or intention, maybe you just take a little pause to kind of Revisit that, staying present. All right, let's inhale, go ahead and rise on back up here. So switching gears, we are gonna come down to the belly. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove my blanket just so that I'm on a nice flat surface. So just in any way, let's come into our sphinx pose. So right off the bat, especially if we've got low back issues, let's create some space between those feet. You can shoot them a little wider than the hips to take off that pressure. So palms down, we're gonna support ourselves with forearms, shoulders, and chest. So I'm kind of doing like a moderate variation right now. I'm not in the full extension, but I'm not kind of too far down either, which if you are, that's fine. If we're starting really small, we can reach it way forward like this and just have that really subtle back bend. No matter where you're at, just make sure that your lower back, glutes, legs and feet are just nice and soft, just engage. It's active through the upper body. Relax through the lower here. So here's our, our kind of in the middle variation. Our full extension is gonna be elbows right underneath shoulders, all right? If that feels like a jamming or cramming, we've gone too far. You can always readjust. So just settle in, two more breaths. Think of just letting those quad muscles and hip flexors just melt and decompress into the floor. Tops of the feet are nice and flat, just soften them. And we're gonna start to bring it down. Just let each elbow start to slide out. You're just gonna melt down through your heart. We're gonna stack palm on top of palm, bring the chin on down to those hands, bend your knees, feet up to the ceiling, and windshield wiper out. So that just simply means that we just wave our feet, Right to left. So it should feel really nice for the lower back if you've got any hip concerns. Just move very cautiously here. We'll go for one more breath. And lengthen those legs long, tops of the feet flat. We're gonna take chin to the mat. Bend those elbows on either side, exhale. Up and back, child's pose. All right, coming into some movement with breath, we're gonna shift from the child's pose to our modified upward facing dog. So you don't have to use blocks, I'm just gonna use them as an example here. If you'd like to try it, you can always align those blocks underneath the palms. We wanna find a child's pose where those arms are fully lengthened and extended here. 
bring your hands or blocks more towards the edges of your mat. So we've got a little bit of a wider stance. So inhaling, lifting up the knees, stay on the floor. Just gonna drop the pelvis forward, lift the heart. So the blocks are kind of our safety net to make sure we don't jam or cram too much. Just like how we adjust in sphinx by moving forward if it's too much of a cramming sensation. We use the strength of our arms to stay as lifted as we need to to protect our back, okay? So just stretching into there, safe range of motion. Exhale, bring it on back, child's pose. So the hands and knees are gonna stay in the same place. We're just gonna start moving with our breath. And by that, I mean just like a cat-cow, just like how we inhale and exhale into the cat-cow. We're kind of having the same effect here, just taking it kind of to the next level. So I'm just gonna come into one more round. You can always take these at your own pace. And let's go ahead and prepare for our first downward dog. If downward dog is not available to you, just take puppy pose. So puppy pose is like the downward dog, you're just on your knees. So for downward, we're just lifting up, tuck those toes behind you, plug in your arms and shoulders before you lift up for safety. Draw those hips up towards the ceiling. Your feet are hip width apart. We're going to walk out our dog this time. That just means to bend and straighten through opposing knees. So arms and shoulders plugged in. If it's hard on your wrists here, which is a common complaint when people first start doing yoga, is that it's hard on the wrist. Think of shifting your weight towards your knuckles and fingertips. Don't uh, you don't necessarily have to make the wrist hold the brunt of everything. You can always even rotate your hands slightly externally as well. So bring those heels down. Just rest into our downward. We're going to start to make our way towards the top of the mat. Bend those knees a lot. Or if you're following along with us in puppy, just pop up in any way you can. And we're just going to gently walk ourselves to our standing forward bend towards the top of the mat. Find those blocks if you need to to bring the ground closer. So see if you can do feet hip width apart still here. Bend your knees as much as you need to for safety for the low back and for the backs of the legs. So shake the head yes and no. We're not holding on to anything in the face or neck. Let it hang heavy. Let's take a half lift. So palms to shins. We're just going to lengthen and flatten our spine. Shoulders back, core plugged in. Exhale, fold back down. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, halfway lift. Lengthen. Think number seven with your body. We want to avoid the rounded back. So for here, pressing back, number seven. Exhale, reaching down. Bend the knees a lot. Really ground through the corners of the feet. We're gonna ragdoll up to standing. All right, all the way to mountain pose. I know I'm just like a little bit cut off here, but you can mostly see to know what to do. So palms spun forward here, shoulders down the back. This is mountain pose, just a basic standing pose. So your tailbone is tucked under. Spinning those palms towards the front of the back is going to help to draw those shoulders down your back and to draw them away from your ears. So take a breath. Legs are strong, but don't ever lock the knees. We want to keep everything flowing head to toe. So let's go ahead and inhale. Bring those arms up and out. We're going to touch our palms overhead. You can either reach straight up towards the ceiling or just do a very subtle tilt back. Exhale, squat dive. So bring those arms out. Flat back, forward bend, and then go ahead and release and round at the bottom. Inhaling, halfway lift. Find our seven. Exhale, fold. Let's come into our reverse swan dive. We're going to flatten the back, so same way we came down, we'll come back up. Gathering overhead, touch those palms. Exhaling, hands to your heart, just breathe. All right, very nice. Let's go ahead and move into our swan dive again. Inhaling, sweep it down, out and up. Touch the palms, reach on back. Exhale, swan diving down. All right, so let's get into our first bigger standing pose. We're gonna do a high lunge on each side. 
So setting myself up, if you've got blocks handy, I just like to have these for support. You can do them at the low, medium, or the high level there. So I'll go ahead and go with medium. I'm just gonna bend my knees and take my right foot and step it way back to my lunge. So you're on the backs of those toes. Your toe is tucked. You can see the alignment of my front knee. This is what we're aiming for, knee over ankle. So think of perpendicular shin to the floor here. So this will keep the knee nice and safe over time and it'll make sure that you're engaging the muscles correctly. So again, sturdy face with the arms. We want to make sure we're not way out here. We want to use that rule of thumb of wrist underneath shoulders here. We're lifting, breathing. Think of squeezing your muscles in towards the bones as we continue to breathe. All right, see if we can lower down, low lunge. All we're gonna do is bring that back knee down. So which is, what's interesting about lunges, which in one of our yoga pose of the day videos, I go over this, but the alignment and rules of the knees completely change once that back knee goes down. So top of the back toe can flatten if you feel stable. So at this point, to get that stretch, we can reach the knee past the ankle, it's okay because our back knee's down, we're safe and supported, and this knee isn't taking the brunt of everything. So a little stretch here. Sometimes it takes some trial and error to get a good alignment between this front foot and back knee, so either inch up or step back. And while we're down here, let's just add a little twist in our low lunge. These are really fun and it's quite simple. We're just gonna take the right arm down. So right hand's gonna go down to your mat or to your block at a level that feels comfortable. Lean into that right arm. We're just gonna inhale. Bring your left arm up here. Just a twist. Exhale, bring it on back down. So transitions. We're gonna go ahead and transition back to our high lunge. So step by step, tuck your back toe behind you. Make sure your arms are in, nice sturdy base. Exhale, rising up. Front knee over that ankle. And we're gonna meet back in the standing forward bend. For some of us, we're gonna step it in just one step. If we're being cautious, take a couple steps. Just think of inching it up. Use those blocks. All right, halfway lift, inhale. Press. Exhale, reach down, fold. Let's ragdoll up to standing here. Just nice, easy transition. Arriving back in our mountain pose and then inhaling up and out. Touch those palms. We're gonna prepare for another swan dive. Exhale, bursting those arms open. Flat back, forward bend. Bend those knees on the way down as needed. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. So same sequence, just the opposite side. Set up your base, step those left toes way back, lunge. So this is like a strengthening pose here. It's also a stretch, but we're really strengthening through the legs, but really these lunges incorporate the entire body. We're even exercising our core, really hugging it through those lower abdominals. Breathing, squeezing muscles in towards the bones. We've got that front shin perpendicular to the floor. And really gently here, we're just gonna lower that back knee down, untuck the back toe, maybe lunge a little more through that front knee. Since we were getting a nice stretch here, let's add that twist on. So I'm just gonna pop my block down one little level here to let me lean a little bit towards that arm. We're just gonna inhale, twist from the spine, lifting the right arm up. And if our arm's more down here, that's okay. We're still twisted. We don't wanna force anything or aggravate the shoulder. Exhale, lowering back down, very nice. So transitioning back to our high lunge. Set your arms up for success. Tuck your back toe behind you. Nice, strong exhale. Lifting the back knee up. Either step or 
inch it back up, forward bend. All right, inhaling, flat back. Exhale, fold. Reverse swan dive, it's the last one. Inhale, bring it back up. Touch your palms overhead, exhaling. Hands to your heart, nice. Okay, before we taper it back down to the floor to prepare for relaxation, we are gonna hit balancing today by just doing tree pose on each side very briefly. So if you are new to a balance practice, I would advise to go over to a wall and have it behind your back, or maybe you just have something to hold on to, whether it's like a chair or a piece of furniture. You can kind of do some experimenting. You can go on the mat or off the mat. In studio, people do both. Some people just have better uh, luck or comfort with different surfaces. All right, so let's start with the right leg as the tree trunk. This is my weaker leg, so I like to get it out of the way first. So start to tilt your weight and your mindset towards the right half of the body. See if your hips can stay level as you come into your tree. Arms of your choice. So before we pop up into it, you could do prayer. You could just do arms down here, here. You can be funky and creative with it, that's fine. So we can always just draw the toe to the ankle and keep the foot on the ground. This is a really nice, safe variation. From there, we kind of work our way up. You might float that toe up off the ground to your ankle. We might go to the cab. We're gonna avoid the knee because it's not safe for our knee, especially over time. If we continue to practice, we can really tweak and aggravate that, which we don't want. So if you're wanting to take it further, you're gonna make sure that you go above the knee, pressing into that inner thigh. So no judgment when it comes to balance. It can be different day to day or even within the same day. There's so many variables that affect it. So the benefit is to just practice. It's not a results-based benefit. Two more breaths. Nice and easy, slide that left foot back down, release the arm, shake that right leg out, breathe. And we gotta make sure we balance it out with the other side. So starting to tilt, make that shift into the left part of the body. Find the variation that you like here, anywhere below or above that kneecap. So remembering it's, uh, it's a practice. It's a yoga practice, it's not a yoga performance. We just meet ourselves where we're at, knowing that things will come in their own time. For some uh, poses, it can it can take years, and that's okay. Everyone's got a different journey, different strengths. Let's go two to three more breaths. And easy slide that foot back down shake everything out great job so let's start to taper on down back to our seat I'm gonna get my blanket out again here I'm gonna put it in my trifold and I'll just face you you can always go long ways down your mat however so these blankets are also great for forward bends especially if you have any lower back concerns going on I love to fold it like this and then inch my seat towards the edge of the blanket. It just creates this nice little kind of posterior like tilt that helps to take pressure off the spine. So just keep those arms down, inhale, sit up tall, exhale nice and easy, just walk it on forward. So just feel that little gentle openness towards the backs of the legs. You can relax the chin when you find a good spot. Be sure to avoid any tweaking in the low back. If we feel that, we need to walk it back in and lessen our stretch. So starting to let things cool down, walk back in as we make our way down to our spines. At this point in the practice, we're starting to let our breath just kind of gently become more relaxed. We don't have to be as like vigilant about our belly breathing and rhythm here. Slowly start to let things come back to normal. 
And since we're all doing like an at-home practice right now to enhance your relaxation, if you like, um, I'm gonna keep mine on, but feel free to dim those lights. Whatever's gonna help you get the most out of your relaxation. We're just gonna roll on back here. I'm just using my blanket as like a little cushion. Let's wrap those knees into the heart. Just a little upside down child's pose. A little bit of rocking from right to left. Let's decompress the low back. So hands on the knees. We're just gonna circle to the right. And circling to the left. Very briefly, let's just bring those legs long up towards the ceiling. So just a nice, easy inversion. It's like a legs up the wall, sans the wall. Just allowing for a little bit of recirculation, a little change in perspective. And let's start to make our way into our own unique Poses of final relaxation. I'm just gonna go traditional, so just long legs and arms out at 45 degrees, palms up. Feel free to relax in anything you wish. You can even bend the knees for low back comfort here. That's a good one too. So as we close our eyes, no more need to engage through the breath or through the body. We're gonna think of this as just hitting reboot on body and mind. Let your back body melt away into the floor. Soften your face. Give yourself this gift to just simply be for the next minute or so. So we go ahead and just hit restart. Start to bring that next inhale back into your awareness. Depending on your schedule, you can always relax longer if it's available to you. We're coming out of everything. We're just going to continue to breathe deeper, wiggling through toes and fingertips. Starting to draw the knees in towards the chest. As we prepare to bring it all full circle, working our way to a seat, you can take a fetal position along the way up or just roll your way back up to seating here. We're just gonna take a brief little pause to close out. Just find that comfortable seated position. Close your eyes for just a brief pause. Find your breath. Simply just acknowledging any changes in the breath, body, mind, or mood. Opening the eyes. Take your hands to your heart. It's so great to be back with all of you to connect on here again. I'm so happy to just be joining you on this platform. So we've got our new schedule kicking off this week. So just um, check out our page for that. And just hopefully I'll see you next time. Peace be with you. Have a good one.